Okay, it's time to get started on this final essay. And while you think about the picture that you've chosen, I want you to open that picture up and look at it and just let your imagination go. Think about what's missing in that character's life. What do they want? What do they, what do they really want? You know, I say I want power, but what is it I really want? Well, I want people to appreciate me. Yeah, what do I really want? I really want people to like me. Okay, so underneath all the layers of behaviors is that. So if what I want is power, the lesson that I need to learn is that I really want acceptance and friends. But that's going to happen over a whole series of tests and details. So we're going to start with the proposal. And the proposal looks like this. I just did a sample right here, but you'll put the working title. And then you'll use that image. The image that you selected needs to go right here. And that way I can see which image you are using from the approved list that you've received. So I want to look these things over that are required for the proposal so I can start thinking about them, jotting down ideas, even dictating ideas into a recording device. But I need to know what's, what's the deal with this character? What do they need to learn? What do they need to learn in order to get what it is that they want? So that would be the theme. And the theme is always very short. It's like every good boy deserves favor. Every dog has its day. Uh, blood is thicker than water. There's a whole list of those in common themes, which you'll find in this module as well. And then I just want to dash down a brief summary. Is that going to change while I write the story? Probably. Uh, I haven't ever written anything myself that stayed completely true to the brief summary that I started with. They always change because they become this ever-evolving, ever-changing story. And that's kind of the fun challenge of narrative writing. And for some, it's a difficult challenge. And it is deciding, you know, when have I told this story? When is the story over? So uh, that brief summary does help get started. And then who are the primary characters? And by that, we need who is the pro who's this story about? And that story is motivated by what? Greed? Lust, uh, hurt, rejection, what are they motivated by? Uh, and they want what, and what do they really want? Underneath everything that the character wants is some deeper, deeper experience that they want. And the antagonist, who wants the protagonist to fail? Now sometimes, let's say that if my protagonist is a little dog lost in the wilderness of Alaska, well, the antagonist might be the weather. Now, that's pretty sophisticated, and generally you would want to create a character who would present uh, a challenge, but that's just one thing to think about. The main supporting character is Leonard, young man receiving treatments for AIDS. And then what I want to think about is the motif. What is the world of this story? What's the tone? Is this a lighthearted story? Is it dark? and that will determine what words we use, right? If it's, a, if it's a really funny story, I would say the sky was dark and filled with stars and, and mystery. And if it was a horror film, I would say it was dark, spooky, the sound of owls pierced the air, blop, you know what I mean. Okay. Then what symbol is gonna be repeated? And my story that I show you as an example, Charlie is this guy running around. He's he's too cute for his own good and he wants to be a rodeo clown and he's running around doing all this stuff and hurting people along the way and I see him as a tumbleweed. And so the symbol in that story is a tumbleweed. So you want to think about what kind of a symbol would be reviewing. And then point of view, who's telling the story? If it's a first person point of view, that's very, very difficult because the person who's telling the story has to be able to see what's happening. So if you say across town, Lucy was talking to her friend Inez about the weather and it's a first person point of view, you can't do that. 
third person point of view can see everything, can see anything, and it can be a narrator, and it can be all kinds of things. So that's just a decision to make at the beginning, and that never has changed for me. Sometimes I do first person, which is three times the work, but sometimes it needs to be told from the point of view of the person telling the story. Most times I try to go with third person. And then a working bibliography. By now you know how to do easy bib. And obviously, like in this story, I have somebody who is suffering from AIDS. Well, I don't know anything about AIDS, and so I'm going to have to do a, enough research that I know some facts. So that's why I have that as the little work cited. And you want to have four or five little citations there. And that's it. Now let's go back to these pictures. I gave you two files of pictures. And so the idea is to find one of those that interests me. Oh man, could I ever write this one? This is fun. I, I can see the Hatfields and the McCoys. I can see all kinds of things in that. Babies, These what do these little four babies have in common? And... What do each of them want? What do they really want? So that's some interesting uh, things to think about there. On we go. You know, sometimes people pick that because, oh, he's cute and he's on his cell phone. And I know a lot about cell phones. And that's great. What does he want? What does he really want? What's trying to stop him from getting what he wants? And it needs to be a challenging story rather than, oh, he's texting his girlfriend, and she says yes, and they're going to get married, and they live happily ever after. That's a naive ending for a story, isn't it? There's a lot more that happens than besides happily ever after. There's a lot of chapters in there. So the, the story needs to have some twists and turns, and I want you to find an image that's interesting to you. Okay, so this cannot be, okay, this guy plays this story, soccer and he is always successful and in the end this girl who adores him uh, finally gets his attention and they get married. That's what we call a success only journey which means he just goes from one success to the next to the next to the next. That is not a narrative and you will lose points for that because first of all it's not interesting. Second of all it's not the way the world goes at all. He's going to have some conflicts. Something's going to happen somewhere. And on they go. So, you know, you want to fill in the details of what's happening, but be inspired by the image to create. If you're changing your mind about which image to use, that's just fine. Do it quick because it, you don't have as much time as you think to write this essay. And make sure you let your Cyber Cafe group know that you have changed your image. And you would do that by going over to the Cyber Cafe Monday check-in box. There's a link to that below. And just let them know that you've changed your mind and what you're thinking. And there should be some good dialogue going on in that Monday post about what where you are with your story and so forth. But these are the points to think about when you choose an image. What do they want? What do they really want? Uh, what's in the way of the getting this goal, and who wants them to fail, what's the world of the story, what lessons must the protagonist learn, and what will be the required repeated image or symbol, and what's the point of view, who's telling the story, and what's the theme. And think challenging, because if you try to do something that's super easy, it's going to show up, and you all are sophisticated, brilliant thinkers. So you can come up with a topic and a plot that is interesting, that has twists and turns, unexpected things happen, which is irony. We expect the protagonist to do this, that, or the other, and they do something different. So enjoy that, all right? Okay, that concludes this tutorial.